Okay, now we're going to move on to part 7C, and that would be the secondary hull bottom. Now, this kit came with two of these pieces. As you can see, you can either choose part 26 or 27. Now, this is going to be, I'm working on the refit. If you were going to be doing the, 25, um, the NCC 1701A, you would use the, the part 27. Because if you can see by looking at the bottom, the refit on the little indented uh, area, it's smooth. On the NCC 1701A, there's actually like grid lines there. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash it because there's a lot of, you can feel the, the release agents kind of greasy film on there. So I'm going to use dish soap. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to wash it and get it ready to prime. Alright, so I went ahead, I washed it um, with uh, dish detergent because um, it's a good degreaser. I just use the Ajax. So you can see the surface is nice and clean and I'm going to prime it with bullseye, one, two, three primer. Um, I'm probably going to do the inside first, so I'll do it that way and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so I put a coat of the primer on, and it's had a chance to dry. So now I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to do the outside. So the... Uh, it's all primed, looks pretty good, it's nice and smooth. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint the inside and I'm going to put it bright white. Let me show you what I'm going to use because I'm going to use something different from the outside. I'm going to use the project spray paint for the inside but it's bright white. So after I get it all done I'll show you what it looks like when the inside is painted. Okay, so it's all painted. The inside is done, it's white. The outside is primed and ready to paint. So I'm gonna paint the outside. And I'm gonna use the Rust-Oleum because this stuff is really good. It makes like a nice shell, protective shell on the model. So let me flip this over and I'll show you guys what it looks like after it's painted. Okay, so it's had all night to dry. It's nice and smooth, and I like the way the paint came out. One thing I'm wondering, I usually put two, like on the other Enterprise that I built, the 50th anniversary, I put on like three coats, and I think it might have been too much. Um, the more you put, see I've got a coat of primer and a coat of paint on each side. And the more paint you put, the more primer you put, obviously takes away and fills in the detail. And I like the way it came out and looks now. So I think I might just leave it like this and move on to the next step, which is applying the masks from Orbital Dry Dock and putting on the, uh, the masks and doing the Aztec pattern. So when the masks are on, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm ready to move on. We're going to apply the paint masks, and of course, I told you 
I got them from Orbital Dry Dock, the five color Aztec masking. And I put <clears throat> my patterns in. Well, I colored the way I want it colored. Um, the rib section and the bottom. I kind of took, I got um, the uh, painting guide from Trek Modeler. And it wasn't exact because the, um, the Orbital Dry Dock mask is different than the one they used, but I got the, the gist of it and put in what I wanted to follow. So I'm pleased with that pattern. I'm gonna put that on. You can see this part <clears throat> has the ribs. I know it's gonna to be tough to see. And I'm doing the Enterprise refit. Um, the thing you see right there is for the, the slanted section on the bottom of the secondary hull. And this is actually for the Enterprise A. Um, you put that on, you remove all the individual paint masks and you uh, do that. Um, I'll get to the refit um, in, a, in a little while. So that, those are the ribs. And again, I apologize if you're not able to see the, the um, patterns. And, oh, it's on this side, okay. These have the, um, the center of the belly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the pieces that I need and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so I cut out the pieces, and these are, for me anyway, they're really hard to see, so you gotta be careful when you cut them out, because not all the sections um, will be grouped together necessarily on the sheets. And through the Orbital Dry Dock's um, recommendations, I am using gloves to avoid as much skin contact with the masks as possible. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got a good pair of scissors, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove the mask area around the actual mask material that we're gonna use. So I went ahead, I removed the material around the masks. And, you know, this stuff reminds me of color forms. Um, I don't know how old you guys are, some of you watching. Um, if you remember when you were a kid, they had these little sticker vinyl things called color forms that you stuck onto plastic backgrounds and you could make scenes. Anyway, um, I have, of course I had the Star Trek one, but it just um, reminded me of that. Um, it's very delicate. What I did was I removed the areas where the underside of the ship, you know, where the, um, the light's going to be. And I don't know if these are phasers or the square sensors. But we go ahead and remove that. Once all the material around the masks is removed, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the tape. We're going to, let me show you what the tape looks like. This is the tape. And we're going to mark off exactly how much we're going to need. Uh, need and I'm going to cut it, and we're going to put it onto the masks. So I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So up to this point, let me show you what I did. I cut the piece of tape. I know you can't really see it. I placed it over the mask pieces that we're going to use. And they give you a tool. And what you do is you press it over the tape and you get rid of all the air bubbles. And you'll be able to see um, when it's a good contact because it's very smooth. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to cut out all the pieces now, all the mask pieces, and I'm gonna cut it as close as possible using the scissors um, to get ready to apply to the secondary hull. I also have my notes. I am going to be sharing them with you. Um, I'll be putting pictures up as I go. And once I'm done the model, I'm going to do a video where I'm going to share just all of my notes with you. Just so you know what I'm doing. And you can see what works and what doesn't work. And you can use it for your model or, or not. But um, that's where we're at. I'm going to cut these out and I'll show you what they look like when that's all done. So 
So here's what everything looks like. It's cut out. Let's see the rib section. That's where the arboretum is going to be. And one, a little side note. When cutting out, you have to cut out the, uh, the areas where the little light is on the bottom. Um, I don't know if these are phasers or sensors, but this is where the LED light's going to go and one of the strobes. And you have to uh, paint these a different color. So in order to get it down so it's flat, you have to cut out the areas that go there. So that being said, we're all set. We're going to go ahead and we're going to apply the masks. Let me show you step by step. So I got the flat section of the fantail masked off. And the instructions say you should dry fit it to see how um, it's going to go on. You can see the lines are perfect where it's going to line up and guide the mask into place. Um, the instructions suggest you start on this side, which be, when you're looking at it, the left side. So the actual ship, it would be starboard side, excuse me. It took, it took me a while to figure out which side. So you start on the starboard side, and you're going to line up in this corner. And then you're going to line the lines up, bring it all the way down, and put it into place. But before you do that, you're going to have to peel off the backing of the masks. And what you do is you start at the point, and you gently pull it back keeping it flat against the surface and you bring it all the way back until it's completely off and then you can guide it using the lines in the model. That's why I had put um, the um, primer and I put the coat of the paint on to get it nice and uh, the color nice. But if you go overboard on the primer and the paint you're going to start to you know, hide the lines that are there in the model. And that's one of the beautiful parts of the ship, of the line, so. Anyway, I'm gonna put this part on, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Hopefully everything lines up. Okay, so, the masks are finally on, and boy, this is, this is really time consuming. And this is really finely detailed work. So you gotta have a lot of patience to do this. There's a reason I chose to do the bottom of the ship first. Um, the instructions from Orbital Dry, dry Dock suggest starting with the saucer section. Uh, I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to get a feel for the masks first and for the painting on the side. This is the first one that I did and you can tell because the ribs um, they're like strands of hair, and they're really, well, I had a really hard time with it. After I got the feel of it, I got a little bit better at it and taking them off. So the more you handle them, the better you're going to feel. What I got to do now is rub them down. I'm going to use the, the tool, and then I'm going to peel off the backing, the tape, and then it'll be all set to start painting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to peel the tape off the backs of the masks and it'll just be the masks on the model and I'll be all set to start painting the, uh, the Aztec ink. Okay, so I got them on as best as I can. Um, boy, this really takes a lot of patience. For me anyway, I mean they stuck everywhere they weren't supposed to stick and they wouldn't stick where you wanted them to stick. But anyway, I'm going to start to paint the Aztec pattern on the bottom, and I'm using the plan that I, that I got. So I'll start by doing the bottom, and I'm going to be doing the green first. So every time I do the green, I'm going to take the piece off, put it on a piece of wax paper, and I'm going to mark it with a marker to see that uh, I had already done that section.
Okay, so let me give you a little bit of an update on what I've been doing. I did the um, all the colors on the belly sections, and what I did was I started working my way for the ribs. And according to the paint guide, um, they were yellow, and there were some um, blocks or rectangles that were um, gold. I figured what I wanted to do was I used the Aztec gold on the rib sections and I'll tell you what I use for the colors on top I used the transparent paint the US airbrush and uh, you can see the colors that I've been using and for the little phaser arrays or sensors I've been using let me show you what that is that's the, the testers I've been hand brushing that part on um, remember the masks are covering the rest of the areas so I can cover that and the little areas in the middle um, I'm gonna put silver but I've been doing the gold and I've been using the hair dryer you know I've seen um, a lot of you guys use all these fancy, tool fancy tools <laughs> but I use old Revlon hair dryer to dry the paint so hopefully it's going to be dry enough and um, the section for the ribs and the section of the belly will be dry enough. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other side. Um, I'm going to do the same pattern and get it ready. You can see some of the other colors that had gotten onto the hull itself. I was going to paint over it and paint it white. Um, but I kind of like the way the colors look under the gold. See right over here? Um, the masks had blown off and when I was painting the other colors I should have covered it all but I didn't but it might be a good thing because these made like different colors underneath so when that's dry and that's dry I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the other side and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready to take the mask off Okay, so I painted it gold. I gave one coat. And I took out the ribs. I'm showing the ribs as best as I uh, could because some of the pieces moved. And you can see it's pretty much. I did the, um, I don't know if that'll focus, the little sensors or cannons, whatever they are underneath. I did, um, I put the little things on top, silver, using Aztec, the uh, tester's paint. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to remove the masks. Wish me luck because these masks are expensive and once they're off I can't put them back on so hopefully I didn't screw up the paint job. Okay, so I'm beginning to understand why people pay so much money to have these done. Um, could this look any more horrible? Again, when you watch my videos, one of the good things that I point out is what not to do with yours. And this pretty much is exactly what not to do with yours. Um, I'm glad I did the bottom of the ship first. I didn't learn my lesson from the the uh, shuttle bay opening. I'm gonna have to land. Now I'm gonna have to uh, get my crap together and figure out how to do this pretty soon. There's no way I'm gonna do this to the saucer section and the rest of the hull. I'm gonna have to figure out how to tone it down or change it or I don't know. I'll have to think of something. Alright, so this is not the result that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
clean all the paint off. I contacted Orbital Dry Dock and I asked if they sold just the couple of sheets, like the individual sheets, because I, when I took the masks off, I threw them away. And I haven't heard back from them. So what I'm going to do is I have the pattern and I got frisket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out on a computer and I'll lay it on that way. And back to the drawing board. First thing I'm going to do is clean this back up. So my idea is to take the frisket film and I've got the orbital dry dock pattern. I've got it in the computer. Um, I told you early in the video, they actually send you this. This is the actual pattern and this is so you can color it with the um, fluorescent pens just to keep track of your colors. Instead of trying to do it on the fly, this gives you like a plan or a layout. I got this in the computer and those are actual size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out on the frisket film and then it should be okay to put onto the ship. I'll just have to cut it. Um, maybe this would be a good alternative because the uh, the masking set from Orbital Dry Dock is expensive. Um, it is worth it. You know, the results are amazing. This will be a lot more work, but I have to do it because I used the, um, the masks from the bottom already. So I'll show you what it looks like after I print it out. Okay, so back to the drawing board. I sanded the hull down, cleaned off the, uh, the paint that was there, and I repainted it. And I used the frisket, and I had the pattern, so I scanned it into the computer. And if you're going to do this, um, when you print it out, print it out from the picture that you scanned in. Don't save it as a PDF file, because it won't come out actual size, and then you'll, well, you'll be screwed. So, and also the frisket has a shiny side and it has like a, like a paper side, but the shiny side is the side that sticks. I recommend printing on the side that has the paper and looking through it and following it that way. I know the printer has settings where you can print on shiny material and I printed this out to show you. And I printed this out yesterday, and just to show you guys, this will never actually dry because of the, the material. Let me show you what it'll do. See? It just won't dry, and you won't be able to work with it. You won't be able to cut it or, or anything. So, don't do it on the shiny side, do it on the paper side. So that being said, I'm going to cut out the middle part, and I'm going to start to lay it onto the hull. Okay, I'm ready to repaint. Everything is masked off, and the frisket has all been put on, and that was real fun. Um, you're gonna have to be really patient if you wanna do it this way. For each little piece that you cut for the frisket, um, to separate the film from the backing can be really maddening. I find that it's best to put one end on a piece of tape, then you put another piece of tape and you push them together, and when you slowly peel the tape apart, um, the adhesive of the scotch tape will separate, and you can put the frisket on. This is really making me regret screwing up the first time with the uh, orbital dry dock masks, but let's see what this ends up looking like. So much like the orbital dry dock mask, every time you take a piece off, you put it on the wax paper, and you mark it with permanent marker, and then you put it back on to keep track. That being said, let's uh, remove the masks and I'll see what it looks like. All right, at this point, I cannot stress enough on how much screwing up the orbital dry dock paint masks really screwed me up on this. Um, it's always a good idea to test your paints to make sure they're gonna come out I tried different paints, um, but the problem was I used it on paper, and I should have been doing it on the actual plastic. 
Um, so I got the frisket and unfortunately it's the clear frisket and when I went to put it on the belly that I, like I showed you earlier um, I have a hard time seeing it because it's clear and that's just it's gonna it, it's not gonna work so what I'm gonna do I measured and each rib is a little bit less than one quarter of an inch so I'm going to put masks on across and I'm gonna make my own pattern for the ribs and when I lay them across then I'll be able to break them off into sections and um, I'll show you what I mean when I get done. All right, so here's what I did. I measured out some strips. I put tape down on a wax paper. I measured out spaces of less, little less than a quarter of an inch. I ran a razor over it and I um, cut them. Then I laid them over the ship's hull on the bottom. And what I did was I made a pattern like a wall. So I started to put lines which broke them up. And every other one I tried to make patterns as best as I could following the Orbital Dry Dock paint mask that I ruined. And the alternative was cutting this out, using a razor, cut everything out, and this is, the frisket is clear and it would have been a nightmare. So this took a while to do, but it's done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint. Um, there's gonna be a couple of areas that I'm gonna do the blue and put the, the mask area back on and then I'm going to do the whole thing in gold and that should wrap up the painting except for the touch-ups so once it's all done and everything is off all the masks are off I'll show you what it looks like and hopefully this is the last time I paint it <laughs> Now that's kind of what I was going for. You see the effect? If you turn it one way, you can see the reflection and you can see the blue, the gold, and the yellow. So I want to let it dry thoroughly and then I'll show you what it's look like, uh, what it looks like when it's ready to move on. All right, so I finished painting it. I did a little bit of touch-ups. You know, let me just give you a word of advice or some caution. Um, I'm using what's supposed to be masking tape for painting. 
and when I've been putting it on, it's it, it might have something to do with the paint that I'm using, the Rust-Oleum. This paint is so good, it makes such a hard protective shell on the model that when I need to touch up areas, I was putting tape over it, and when I was peeling the tape off, even though I was careful about it, it was actually taking off the paint. It was taking off the Aztecing. See, there's an area right there where the paint came off, and it was on a tape. So, this is the only section that I use tape and stuff because I screwed up the Aztec um, from Orbital Dry Dock. The next sections I'm going to be doing the sides, and I am definitely heating all the warnings and doing it the right way. And I actually found the correct paint. Let me show you guys. First paint that I used, I used the testers, the pearl. And though it looked nice, it really wasn't that pearlescent. And trying to thin it out, it didn't work on the paint with the Rust-Oleum. Let me show you what I use. I like the Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum is, of course, it's an oil-based paint. The problem with this one was, every time I tried to thin it out, it was water-based. So it would, you know, the, the paint would ball up and just beat up on the surface and it just was not working. So then I figured, well, maybe I need some translucent paint. So I got the U.S. Supply airbrush paint that was translucent, uh, excuse me, transparent. And that didn't work. That was even worse. That was when I got done. It looked like an Easter egg. And I decided to keep all this in my video just to, to show you guys. You know, not everybody, you know, sells these things for eight grand and knows what they're doing like me. I, I have no clue. So I learn as I go. And all my mistakes are going to be your, well, learning tool. But I found the best paint, at least for the Aztecing, the Inspire airbrush paint, the pearl color. I got the gold. The green, the blue, and the red. And when it comes to the Aztecing, remember, you don't want it to be, oh yeah, look at all the colors on the surface of the ship. You want to say, oh, is there something on there? And then when you look closer, you say, wow, there is. And when light hits it, it's supposed to reflect different colors. Now remember, I screwed up the mask on this, and some of the paint pulled off that mask that I made. And it took me so long to do. Um, I'm not going to be able to touch it up or redo it. So I'm going to have to live with it the way it is. But remember, it's going to be like this. So it's going to be the under part. You will still be able to see the ribs. And the ribs still look good. You can see the different colors. But yeah, as for the Aztecing in the bottom, and I put a little bit more paint on there. Um, I'm ready to move on. I'm going to start the... Uh, putting the lights in place and like I did with all my other notes I'm going to share my notes with you and I'll show you the way I'm going to wire it Okay, so I glued the windows into place, and I did the photo etch pieces. Now, because the photo etch pieces are so small, um, the very finely detailed, what you do not want to do is run a blowtorch over it because you'll ruin them. Um, they suggest a hot plate stove, um, an electric stove. We have an electric stove, but it's got a glass top, so it wasn't hot enough. So what I did was <clears throat> I put pictures up. And I used pliers, held onto it, and I used a cigarette lighter on a very low flame on the bottom. Now you know it's getting annealed when you can see the metal start to change color. So that's how I knew it was annealed. Because the way the windows are, they have that slight curvature. And if you don't anneal them, they're going to keep popping out. Um, and I used the clear glue 
to cement them into place. So that being said, I'm ready to start doing the um, lighting and the wiring. Okay, so when it comes to the video, um, excuse me, the wiring, I did a diagram, and of course I'm going to put up all my notes so that you guys can see what I'm doing. The ones in the front, there are actually going to be two lights here. There's going to be 1.8 millimeter, a white light, and that's going to be the smaller one. And then the larger one, which will be LED 13, that's going to go to the strobe board from Tenor Controls. It's going to go to lead 1 and 2, and it's going to be paired with 10, 11, and 12. Those are all for the strobe lights. Now, because there's going to be two lights going here, um, the piece that goes in there, I don't know if you can see it, it's very small. There it is. And that's just not going to do the job. So I'm going to have to open up the hole a little bit, and the 3 millimeter will be prominent, and then the 1.8 millimeter, I'm going to have to figure out how it's going to go where it can actually strobe. As for the back part, that's going to be three millimeter, and it's also going to be white. <clears throat> and that one is not going to strobe or blink in any way. And I put the little piece in. I put this in, but you also attach a little piece on the underside in that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a drill, and I'm going to drill it a little bit so that the bulb can actually pass into that piece. And it'll illuminate around the area as well. So, those are the placements for the lights. Now the lights themselves, of course, they're the LED lights and they are not pre-wired. So, these are going to require resistors. So let me get them set up and I'll show you what I'm going to do with them in a minute. All right, so I got the bulbs laid out. I got the 1.8 millimeter and two 3 millimeter bulbs. And if you just hook them up to the power source the way they are, they will burn out because there's no resistor. So the resistors have to get soldered onto the leads. Now when it comes to the LED lights, the long lead, you got a long lead and you got a short lead. The longer lead is positive, the positive side. And that's the side that the resistor is going to be um, soldered to. The positive side, or the longer side, is the anode side that will get the resistor. The shorter side, or the negative side lead, is the cathode side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the bulbs, and I'm going to solder them and then I'll show you what they're going to look like when they're done. Okay, I went ahead and I soldered the resistors to the positive side or the anode side. And what you're going to have to do is cover one of the sides, just so the sides don't meet because obviously if they meet, let me see if I can focus that for you it'll short out so they can't touch positive and negative can't touch so what I did was I covered it in tape up to the bulb just so there's no chance at all that the wires will touch and short the bulb out so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wire the wires to the LED leads and I'll show you what it's like and I'll test them for you um, before I install them Okay, so I soldered all the leads to wires, and then I taped them just to make sure that they'd be secure. And as you can see, I'm testing them all. They're all working just fine. Now, because they are, these are LEDs that are not pre-wired, um, we have to solder wires to them. And it's very important to keep the positives with positive and negative with negative, so that way um, you can tell, because this is going to get very 
confusing inside the ship. There's going to be a lot of wires. So what I'm doing is I bought a big roll of the wire, but it's got the different colors, but I'm still going to stick with the red for positive and the black for negative. Just to keep track of everything. Okay, now we're all set now to start putting the bulbs and um, putting them inside the hull. Okay, so I hot glued the bulb for the rear of the ship into place and hot gluing the wires. Again, to keep them neat, because it's gonna get messy in here, there's gonna be a lot of wires. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna glue the next one into place. And I drilled a hole underneath where the arboretum is for the next um, light. Okay, so I hot glued the other two bulbs in place. And I glued the wires to the bottom so they wouldn't be in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead right now as I'm gonna hook them all up and I'm gonna test them real quick and show you to make sure they all work. All right, so I got everything hooked up to, it's hooked up together, but that's just to test all of them. Remember, I'm gonna be plugging it in, so the temporary battery pack is just temporary. So let me show you the bottom. Hopefully it stays connected. You can see the, the light, the back of the fan tail. And the one in the front is the one that's gonna be going to the tenant control strobe. And the one in the middle is the one that's going to be on all the time. Um, forgive the quality of the video, I know it's pretty crappy. I'm using my phone. But, all right, the wiring part, at least for the bottom, is all set for the lights. And this is just three lights. And look at the mess that's already <laughs> in the bottom of the secondary hull. And that didn't even include the wires that are going to come from the... Um, the uh, hanger deck. So there's going to be a lot of wires coming out of here. All right, it's just to give you an, exa an example of everything that's in there and how crowded it's going to be in there. I got the lights in the back of the shuttle bay because that's going to go and light the back of the door. You know what? Let me try to piece that on and, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so I pieced the back on. It's not, uh, it's not glued or anything. I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like. So that's on all the lights to light up the back, the shuttle bay opening. And then uh, you got the bottom, lights for the light in the bottom. Like I said, the one in the front, the light in the front is going to be for the strobe. And you got the one in the back of it that's going to be on constantly. And it just went out. But you get the idea on all the wires, and that's not even the, um, the landing bay interior is not even lit up, because that's going to be on a different circuit. Um, I'm going to put that on, on its own switch, so when, I'm, when no one's looking at it, I can just put it off. So, that, my friends, is the bottom of the secondary hull. And it's getting there. Um, I'm doing it from the ground up. This is part 7C, secondary hull bottom. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move on and do the side panels. Because there's, you know, it's again with the fit of this model kit, um, you got to be careful when you do the painting and the priming because, uh, you know, it, it thickens it up, especially the better quality paint you use. Let me put the lights back on for you and show you what I mean. There's little grooves that go in there. And when you put the paneling on of the side, 
there's a lip and the lip goes in. But if everything, when you put on too much paint, it actually changes the size and the, you know, the slots in the model. So it doesn't go together. I found that out the hard way on the back. And I'm going to have to do some sanding to get it together. Because I don't have the area where I can't just put the whole secondary hull together and then paint it. I, I just don't have the area to do that. So I have to do it a section at a time. So that's why I did the secondary hull, the bottom. Um, the Azteking. And everything is loosely. And I put in the lights, the lights, hardwired the lights. Um, got them in place. The Arboretum is in. The shuttle bay. Like I said, nothing is glued yet. That'll be the final step is when I actually glue the secondary hull together. That's after the nacelle pylons and everything is going to be done. So the next one I'm probably going to do is probably, let's see, 7B, the secondary hull sides. And I'll be doing the port side and the starboard side, obviously. But I'll make probably do different videos for each one because there's a lot of painting for that. And now that I got experience with the kit for the masking, um, it's not going to end up like the bottom did. Um, it's going to end up looking good now that I got the right paint too. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, you can learn from my mistakes. So all the screw-ups and everything that I did, I, I actually was going to cut everything out that I made mistakes with. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that are just brilliant when it comes to models and uh, the modeling and all the stuff associated with it. Well, I'm very inexperienced and I have a hard time um, doing it. So what I did was I wanted to learn, so I learned by doing. And all the mistakes that I made, I kept in this video just to make sure you guys didn't make it. So, a lot of my videos are for what not to do. That being said, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If not, I hope it was entertaining. <laughs> and um, I'll see you next time.